Do you notice Hawaii off to the right? You see a significant system. It looks like a hurricane, but it's an upper level low. And they look like hurricanes. And this is what's left of our jet stream. This is small in comparison. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying that. When we have huge rotations going on that are bigger. And in front of those rotations, you get off walls of water that want to spin in the other direction. Newton's law still applies to weather, and when you get something spinning that aggressively, you're going to create counter rotation, just like when one re wheel rolls against another wheel. The second wheel spins in the opposite direction. The thing that's different about this, well, first of all, there's no jet stream anymore, but, but second of all, which is the new normal, but it's the speed, the speed is incredible. And here's that system a week later. This is now probably two weeks after we've captured these images. We're just analyzing what's going on. It's so much going on. But you can see uh, there used to be a question mark, those, the, the shape of that there system. The bottom of the systems used to reach all the way down past the equator and grab water from the equator once in a while depending on you know how far north on the latitude they are but directly above it notice that very straight line of high speed weather and that's a monster vortex i mean monster and 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 the upper wind speeds are incredible and if you're a pilot and you catch a tailwind uh, you may have to put out your flaps because you're going to lose your air pressure. Um, and I'm telling you, the bottom leg to this upside down question mark, it's still there. It's still drawing. But because of the sheer nature of the shearing at the top of that system, uh, it's just ripping off the upper layer and preventing a back rotation of water. Now, here's that system a week later. It's still spinning very fast and creating counter rotations again. And this looks like a storm spinning backwards. And in actuality, it is. And Greenland, look, here's that monster vortex. That's huge. That covers all of Greenland and reaches all the way down past Florida and pulling rivers of water up incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. So that's 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 really just taking the northern equatorial belt of water that comes south of Hawaii and just stripping it off, stripping it off and sending it elsewhere. And but here's a good look at that shearing at about the eleven and twelve o'clock position. And you see you see a area that's huge again, not quite as huge as the northern, but it's creating a counter rotation that's counterclockwise. Down there. That's amazing. So the Earth's atmosphere is heating up. And I'm not sure that you can rule out what the effects of geoengineering can do. But it sure seems like water just disappears over the west coast of the United States. And those are huge vortices that one over Greenland. Huge. And We've been saying for a long, long time, you know, people ask how come we weren't covering all the tornadoes and all the weather and all the, the stuff that was going on. Well, I mean, that stuff we warned you about for years. We warned you this stuff was coming when the more tornado, we were on top of the more tornado and, and Hurricane Haiyan and its sister. And we were, we were covering the, the incredible amount of hail it's set up, I'm telling you, it's set up by nucleation using metallic oxides. Water sticks to these metal particles and, and forms ice at a higher temperature. They're making it snow at 38 degrees. That's scary. And as the death toll rises from the tornadoes, those are just the symptoms of hotter climate. Now, it has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. Anybody who knows anything about the ice core record can tell you carbon dioxide 
does not kill off plant. It may kill off man, but it ain't going to kill off life. Um, and there's always oxygen being produced as a result of that carbon dioxide in the upper atmosphere. But the sheer amount of tornadoes ju just in the first part up till May, we thought was a lot. But then, then came the storm, and it was nuts how many tornadoes were being created. And it's all a function of faster wind speed, hotter temperatures. When you, so the sun is cooking us. It's cooking Earth. It's cooking the whole solar system. And Neptune might be kind of a nice place to visit in a few more years. But I'm telling you, you've got to be watching the weather satellites. And, and, and GOES satellite, G-O-E-S, satellite server, has made it hard to get anything on the eastern part of that satellite. The GOES east is, is severely depleted in terms of number of images and quality of images. But GOES west still seems intact. So you really want to fortify your bunker. You don't want, just because you're 12 feet underground, the more, the more tornado proof, you, you've, got, you've got to have a bunker. You can't just have a basement if you want to eliminate all your risks. You have to have a bunker. Um, and my, I, I've heard rumors that some of the elitists and government people do have bunkers. So I wonder, wonder why. But when snow comes from the sky like this, and it's happening every year now, it's a function of heat. Yes, a function of heat. And metallic oxides causing increased and easy nucleation. So say goodbye to our jet stream. Oh yeah, and I want to show here, here that flow of moisture going across towards South America. Some people will call that El Nino. I can't call it El Nino because of the extreme speed of the southern upper level lows. They're, they're catching up to the north in a hurry. In terms of size and speed, those vortexes, because the South Pole used to have a jet stream that just ran opposite of the North Pole, all set up by the rotation of Earth.